I'm Munira. I'm from Mumbai, India. I was born in a devout Muslim family, praying to Allah three times a day, fasting, almsgiving, namaz. As a Muslim, I always felt like I had to buy his favor. I had to fast and pray if I wanted something from him. And I always had this fear that if I was to do anything wrong, I would be punished. So I had this image of this Allah as a God who I could not have a relationship with. And then uh, it was this one incident in my life that changed this whole concept of God. I had a cousin of mine, he went through a near-death experience. He felt himself go through a dark tunnel and uh, he, at the end of the tunnel, he saw a bright light and he saw two people standing there. He saw Jesus and Mary, that's what he told me. So I asked him, I said, how come you saw Jesus and Mary when it should have been Muhammad, a prophet Muhammad and Imam Ali? So he's saying that, uh, no, I saw Jesus and Mary. So we asked the Imam of the mosque that, you know, how could this be an explanation to this? And they said that they couldn't give me an explanation. They said that, yeah, we believe in Isa. He is Isa Ruhullah. And uh, when we die, he comes to take our souls. So, but that was the explanation that was given. But I was not very satisfied with that. And that's where my search for the truth began. And I didn't know where to look for Jesus. I, I had a lot of Christian friends, but uh, the closest that I could get to was the Mahim Naveenas, the Naveena to the mother of perpetual Sakha. So I started attending that regularly and it was over there that I kept hearing through the homily the word of God being uh, explained. But it went on for years, it, I didn't much understand it. And I believe that it was Mary who led me to the truth to her son. I had a dream and in that dream I see a finger calling me. I saw this finger calling me and, uh, by name and saying, Munira, you go follow him. And the finger pointed out to a man dressed as a shepherd. And I knew it was Jesus. So I asked that voice, who are you and where will you be? And that voice said, he and I are one, you go follow him. I so much wanted to, uh, to, to do that, to follow him. But I just didn't know how. And I believe God sent his angels, you know, to, to lead me. And I was led to Father Rufus. As a Muslim, I did a retreat with him and it was over there that he told me about the man on the cross, that he died for Muslims, Hindus and all mankind all over the world. And I said, you know, I would like to know him more. That's where, where I really wanted to know more about Jesus. We had a, a friend whose daughter, she was a possession case and uh, so they came and they asked me that, uh, what do we do? They were Christians, they were Catholics. And they asked us like, you know, that do you know what to do in a situation like this? You know, because my daughter is behaving very strangely and uh, we do not know what to do. So as a Muslim, I told her that, you know, we have these Babas, you can go and ask them because that's all that I knew. I didn't know how to deal with that. And then uh, she came back to us after about two months. And then I see this young girl of 13 who was so thin and puny. She's a healthy teenager, looking so radiant and robust. So I asked, how did this happen? You know, like she's looking totally changed. I mean, she doesn't look possessed at all. Then she told me about uh, that how she went to Father Rufus and by the name of Jesus, uh, she was delivered. She invited my sister and she invited all of us to go to Father Rufus, you know, to meet him. I didn't want to go because I was one just saying that Allah is my God, you know, he will, he will do something, you know, like I couldn't just be convinced yet about uh, uh, Jesus. So my sister started going there and I happened to go to Father Rufus that one Sunday and when he prayed over me and there was no turning back. I came home and I opened the Bible for the first time. I started reading the Bible and there was like I began to understand something of the Bible and he told me one thing was that be attached to a prayer group start going for a prayer meeting that's where you will get to know Jesus and I was searching I said where do I go again where's the prayer, prayer group which prayer group do I go what is a prayer group I had no knowledge of this you know I started praying to Jesus 
and there was a point when I was praying to Jesus, reading the Bible and also reading my Quran. And I prayed and I said, Lord, what is the truth? If you are the truth, then take this away from me. You know, give me the desire only to read the Bible. Or is it the Quran? So I was there and when I, I started praying, something within me just led me to only open the Bible. And I started only reading the Bible. And how beautifully God sent his angel through a friend and told me, why don't you come for this prayer meeting? And I initially I said no. She asked me the second time. And the third time I said, let me go. And I went to the prayer meeting. And the second time I took my sister along. And there was a word of knowledge that there's a, two sisters have come searching for the truth. And their search has ended. And I knew it at that point that it was me and my sister that the preacher was talking about and there was no turning back then and we started attending the prayer meeting Wednesday after Wednesday and slowly after I was reading the word and understanding the word and I knew that I had to do two things forgive and repent and as we as I started doing that there was a change within me and this was noticed by my other family members and so my mum, my dad, my nephew, all of them started attending the prayer meeting. And it was there at this prayer meeting that one day when uh, the importance of the rosary was being mentioned. And my dad said, you know, we'll go back and we'll start praying the rosary. And we as a Muslim family, we would kneel down and pray the rosary every day. My love for Jesus took me to the Holy Land. And it was even before I went to the Holy Land, Again, I had a dream and in the dream, I actually got up coughing and in that dream, I hear a voice telling me that there is fear and anger deep down within you. You know, Sister Hazel, she will help you, you know, you speak to her, she will help you to release that fear and anger. So I told my sister about it. I said that, you know, uh, this is very strange. I, I can't understand what is this, was it? What was it? I actually got up coughing and so she just said one thing. She's saying that you're going on this trip, just ask for the Holy Spirit. I said, Holy Spirit? Who's the Holy Spirit? I mean, I didn't know anything much about the Holy Spirit. So we were at the Holy Land and we were 72 of us. It was a big group. And so wherever we were going, we were landing up late being at the churches. And we were at this church of St. Peter where he got a dream about that uh, white sheet, you know, and he's saying that Peter, eat everything. It was late in the evening, the church doors were closed. Father Rufus was there with us. They rang the bell of the church. Nobody was opening the doors of the church. After 15, 20 minutes, Father said that, you know, uh, let us just make a prayer outside the church. I was there in the crowd and suddenly some, something within me said, you know, Munira, you go ring the bell. I, I asked Father's permission and I rang the bell. And within two seconds, the, those big, huge doors of the church opened. And Father, I remember Father asking that priest over there. He's saying, I'm ringing from the past 20 minutes. She's saying, didn't you hear the bell? And the priest says, see, I'm sitting just here. She's saying, I only heard this bell that you just rang. And I opened the doors. And all that I can remember Father Rufus saying, the Gentiles will receive the Holy Spirit. And I was the Gentile over there with them. The next day, we were to visit the upper room. So we were at the upper room. It was a bright and sunny morning. And as we were praising God, I heard this roar of thunder and that kind of a wind blew into the room and I was blessed with the gift of tongues. I couldn't believe it that this is what Jesus could do. He baptized me in the Holy Spirit in the same place where the Mother Mary and the Apostles were baptized. So I was totally in love with Jesus then and I wanted to totally follow Him. Our tour guide was a Jewish and he uh, told us that this is something very strange that's happening from the time I've come with your group. First the doors are opening and, uh, and, uh, and, and this, uh, uh, this experience of the, this roar of thunder and she's saying that this, I've been getting so many tours all these years, nothing like this has ever happened. And he also got down on his knees and he, was, he, he prayed. When I got back, the Holy Spirit put into me the desire for baptism and I so much wanted to be baptized. But I had a dream uh, subsequently sometime around about that time that 
attend the Eucharist every day. And I so much wanted to attend the Eucharist. How do I attend the Eucharist every day? Because I'm still a Muslim and I expressed my desire to my parents. My mom said, see Munira, we follow Jesus. We believe in Jesus. We love Jesus. But conversion is saying that, you know, that I don't think we should do it because you know what will, the repercussions in the, we are living in a society and, uh, and I don't think, you know, it is a real good idea to even think about it. But there was a d deep desire within me to receive the Lord. And I remember like the Canaanite woman, I once implored to the Lord, I said that you fed the, you fed the Canaanite woman from the crumbs from your table. Treat me like one of them and let me attend the Eucharist. Again, a voice spoke to me in my dream and said that today you will attend the Eucharist. So I said, how Lord, I, you know that I cannot go to a church, you know. And so I was sitting out and having my tea on the, in the balcony and I saw these people carrying a wreath and going from the lane down my road. So I called up this friend of mine and I said that what has happened, you know, has someone passed away? Because I can see people carrying a wreath. So they, she said that, you know, Mrs. Rodericks has passed away. Now she was my client and just one week back I had cut her hair. So I went for her funeral and over there again that voice told me, I told you today you would attend the Eucharist. And when I came back home and I mentioned this whole episode to my dad. So my dad said that, see, we go for a walk in the morning. I cannot say, we, I don't see any church which we can go into and, you know, we can go over there. But there is one church over there. I will go for my walk. You just go inside and you sit over there. As um, we went there and within two minutes, the Eucharist celebration started. And my dad said that, okay, so we come here every day and we started attending Mass every day. That's where I feel that my road to baptism started. I had expressed my desire to be baptized to the prayer group people. So they were planning on a trip to uh, Michigori, where Our Lady had appeared. So they said, but we had to go via Rome. Sister Hazel told me, would you like to get baptized in Rome? I said, yeah, sure, why not, you know. Hazel took it up very seriously. She spoke to the, to the bishop. And the bishop gave us an appointment with the cardinal for in, in two days. And so we went to meet the cardinal Ivan Dias. And we just had a five minute uh, appointment with him just to say, given our paper that we were going to Michigori. And that five minute appointment landed up for two and a half hours. And Sister Hazel told the Cardinal that, um, you know, they are coming with us, you know, these are the two Muslim girls, we are going to Michigori. And do you think, Cardinal, that they can get baptized in Rome? And the Cardinal said, why not? He's saying, I will do the baptism and I'll ask the Pope to do the baptism for them. And he took on the whole responsibility of us going to Rome, getting baptized and our whole stay in Rome. And I was just looking and I said that, Lord, what is this happening? The Lord had other plans for us, I guess. So he took us to Rome and we went to Rome. And it so happened that the Pope had a meeting on that day. So he couldn't, but we were baptized in the private chapel of the Pope, me and my sister. I took on the name as Fatima and she took on the name of Maria. And I celebrated my baptismal lunch with all the cardinals. It was Cardinal Ivan, he was celebrating him being a cardinal. We had a combined lunch with all the cardinals and the priests and religious over there. And I just felt right through it all, the Lord saying, taste and see how good the Lord can be for those who put their trust in Him. And yes, so, that was the wonder that the Lord did. When I came back, soon came the cross of Calvary. Our family ran into a deep financial crisis. And uh, they said that, you know, you all have turned to Christianity. And, you know, you all have brought this upon us all. So at that time, I was just wondering, I said that, you know, what would my, what would my mom and dad, you know, like, would they turn back? How would their reaction be? You know, I was like, I said, I've just got baptized and now what, what are they going to do? And the beautiful thing that happened was my dad and my mom, my nephew and my brother, all of them got baptized. In spite of all the opposition, the whatever we were going through, they found the strength and courage in Jesus. I can remember my dad saying, there is no Christianity without a cross. And it's so beautiful that um, my whole family did come to the Lord. All these, um, the situation of ours, my dad left home. 
and he was staying a little away from us because with all the pressures of the people asking us for finance and you know so they, he, he decided to live separate and it was during this one time that he experienced the lord and that was soon when he was he decided to get baptized it was during lent and he uh, you know we put up this cross with all our petitions over there one evening he he came and he says you know munir i didn't see the cross over there and when i came back from mass i saw the cross over there i said you know maybe like you know this pressure of, of this finance and all is getting to him you know and uh, maybe i should like you know not leave him alone so often i said that you know daddy i think you should just need to pray and little have a little more confidence in the lord 15 days later he came up and he said the same thing and he said that he had asked the sacristan that uh, you know there was a cross over here and i don't see that cross you know and, and after mass i see the cross it is in the same place so uh, he said that we've never moved we've not moved that cross the cross has always been there then i got a little troubled and i spoke to sister hazel about it and she uh, we spoke to another priest and they came and they visited my dad and they asked him when you didn't see the cross over there what did you see over there and my dad said uh no and i saw a bright light like thousand bulbs flashing over there and i was looking into the light then the priest said and and he said you know what father i cannot look at a headlight of a car and i was actually looking at this light and what did you see he saying and i saw on the top over there written i am the resurrection and the life and my dad that night he says i would like to get baptized as soon as i can and um uh, the we went and we spoke to the priests and all and uh, you know we started his procedure for baptism because he was already going through catechesis and uh, the day we fixed the date for the baptism he uh, we, he was diagnosed with renal failure so he would have to go on dialysis and i thought you know i said that lord is he going to change his mind what would he do and he says get me baptized soon and he was baptized on the feast of our sacred heart and he took the name of joseph and he died when we celebrate the feast of saint joseph as a muslim i had this image of this allah as a god I had to please him i had to fast and pray and uh, uh, ask for favors and i didn't even know that you had to have a relationship with him in fact my aunt asked me you know she saying that why do you call god father she saying that you cannot call him father he is god he is allah so i said that no i said that now that i have come to jesus i have a totally different uh, image of this father i call him father he is my father and i have a relationship with him that the father loves me so much and he's given me uh, he's given me his son he's washed me clean from all my sins and i have the promise of eternal life and i i told her i said this is my god and i gave her my testimony and i asked her what would you have done if you were in my place would you have still followed allah or would you have followed jesus and she had no answer Are you searching for purpose of life? Discover your true identity. Stay tuned to Shalom World.